any time an organism is exposed to something that's intended to kill it, that organism is going to try to find a way to escape from or protect itself against the thing that's trying to kill it. But what we do with antibiotics is we make that natural process so much worse because we give the wrong doses of antibiotics to people, or we give the right doses, but people end up dosing themselves incorrectly because they don't take a full prescription, or because we give antibiotics to healthy farm animals. What we do in all those situations is we set up a sort of Darwinian battleground within the body of the human or the animal who's getting the antibiotics, in which the weak, susceptible bacteria are knocked out by the drug, but the strong survive. Even five years ago, I would have said that the story of antibiotic resistance is that we knew what the bugs were doing, we just didn't really care. We didn't really care that antibiotic resistance was rising, that the bugs were becoming increasingly resistant, that pharmaceutical companies were not making enough drugs anymore. But what I think is the story now is that there are actually sources of antibiotic resistance that we really were not folding into the equation. And the biggest source probably turns out to be the way that we misuse antibiotics in agriculture. CAFOs, confined animal feeding operations. They're the basic unit of intensive confinement agriculture. Very large numbers of animals, cattle, pigs, chickens, turkeys, held in a small space, a much smaller space than they actually evolved to live in, um, not allowed to get away from their own waste, given feed and water that contains antibiotics. And what happens is these farms turn into sort of giant petri dishes for the emergence of resistant bacteria because the animals get the antibiotics. The organisms in their guts respond to the antibiotics or sometimes organisms on their skin. And then the antibiotics pass through the animals with their manure, go into the manure lagoons on the farms and then leave the manure lagoons when the surface dries out and the dust blows away, or when the manure breaks through the liner of the lagoon and leaks into groundwater, or maybe the manure gets on the skin or on the clothing of the farm workers. So the, those organisms leave with the animals, leave with the dust, leave with the wind, leave with the farm workers, but we don't really know what's going on the farms because we don't have a good lens into them and we're not allowed any way to track what's happening on them. Over 10 years, at least three bills in the U.S. Congress, the PAMTA about farm antibiotics and the GAIN Act and the STAR Act, which were both about improving conditions under which pharma companies would bring out new drugs. Nobody really seemed to notice that these bills were happening. I, I just don't have the sense as a journalist that any of these bills were made important beyond the narrow constituency that they already appealed to. And I think even though Plenty of people now care about antibiotic resistance and care about farm antibiotic use and care about protecting children. If you asked any of those just everyday moms, had they heard about this legislation, the answer would probably be no. I, I think they, the, the news of these bills' existence and the possibility of political action just really was not made clear. Are we doomed? I don't think so, but actually changing the big picture situation requires a lot of effort by a lot of big actors beyond the individual.